Yo, I'm Bob. Into Marvel. Happened to be totally blind since birth. Talking about Spider-Man, the animated series, season one, episode five, chronologically anyway. It's The Menace of Mysterio. It premiered on February 25th in 1995. And this one actually fits right after Return of the Spider Slayers. It's right after Peter Parker's and Mary Jane's blind date. I guess that went very well for those two. She's wanting him to tutor her in this episode, but uh, he is wrapped up with the villain of the week, Mysterio. Well, Mysterio is not a villain of the week. We actually see him show up a few more times in the animated series, and I like how they're setting things up with the Sinister Six. We get a lot of seemingly one-shot episodes in season one, but then again, they're not because, well, in this one, for instance, we get to see a bit of a flashback to... Peter Parker's origin story. This was how I was introduced to the origin of Spider-Man. And we'll get to that in due time as well. So Spidey is framed for a crime he didn't commit by Mysterio. I like how JJ, he's typical JJ. He's not wanting to ask any questions. Spider-Man is automatically guilty. Um, at the beginning of the episode, you see Spidey robbing the museum but it's, of course, Mysterio. I love the maniacal laugh that Greg pulls off. And, of course, they pitch his voice way down in this episode. I don't think it's done in other episodes of the show. This is the only one where they they pitched his voice down almost an octave. And I kind of like that, though. You're not meant to know who he is. I guess he ditches the, the voice modifier later on in the show. But in this episode, <laughs> he sounds very menacing, actually. And... Um, Aunt May is not happy with New York's, well, one of New York's superheroes. She's automatically thinking he's guilty as well. We get to see Peter Parker doing a little detective work. Because Mysterio, he manufactured some webbing of his own, but uh, it's not biodegradable like the webbing that Peter makes. I like in this carnation how he doesn't just shoot webbing out of his hands. He's got to make it. Uh, with chemicals, and he's got to constantly change web cartridges. This was definitely the, the first time I ever really got to learn about how Spider-Man made his webs. And I kind of like this because he's got to worry about running out of webbing in this show. Uh, he's somewhat limited when it comes to web fluid. He's constantly got to be making more batches of the stuff. And of course, Mysterio doesn't have Peter's know-how, so right away there's some evidence. But... Um, Peter is taking evidence away from the crime scene, and he is cornered by Lieutenant Lee, Terry Lee. And this character was one of my favorites in the show. She's voiced by Dawn Lewis, and we get to see Terry quite a few more times before the show wraps up. But this is her debut episode, and uh, she feels that Spider-Man is framed, but she doesn't let Peter know that right away as the episode begins. He is, however, uh, wanted for questioning because he was trying to remove evidence. And right before she can take him downtown, we get Mysterio doing what Mysterio do. He's, uh, I think he's throwing his head around, causing all sorts of illusions with his hollow cube technology in this episode. I think he makes the... Uh, the media believe that the museum roof is collapsing on them, but it, it is, of course, his hollow cubes, as we find out later on. I'm not sure what all he does. He's apparently able to design robots. I kind of wish they'd introduce the Tinkerer in this show, but uh, there's there's no Tinkerer here. Quentin is is a genius when it comes to designing robots, I guess. So we get to see robots throughout the episode. He's just kind of depending on his hollow cubes. I remember the action figure of Quentin Beck or Mysterio, the fishbowl head, the fishbowl helmet uh, isn't removable, but um, he did, you could squirt water out of his little buttons on the, on the front of his costume. Well, they look like buttons to me. Um, supposed to dissolve Spider-Man's webbing. I never really used the water feature in the old Toy Biz action figure, but I like the design, the cape, the uh, the fishbowl helmet he wore, just a really snazzy looking costume uh, that he wore. 
Um, it was the old Toy Biz version of Mysterio from Spider-Man the Animated Series. I don't know how well I would like it these days because he had that big air pump looking thing sticking out of his back and when you removed that from his back there was a big hole in his back where the air pump would go so um he looked like he he had a mortal wound there in his back and you know when you when you had the air pump attached to him though it was it was a little better but it looked kind of silly um wouldn't mind uh updated version of mysterio for this day and age i don't have any spider-man action figures at present but uh, I would like to remedy that uh, eventually by buying some of the the Marvel Legends uh, villains and heroes from the from the TV show. I love Mysterio as a villain though. Such a sneaky character constantly using that holotech. I don't know if he used anything to dissolve Spidey's webbing in this episode or not. There are a lot of visual goings on in this episode. Thankfully, though, Spider-Man, he does a lot of internal monologuing, so that's one way to help me figure out what's going on. You have Peter constantly talking to himself in his own head, so that's very helpful. If that wasn't going on, I'd probably have as tough a time with this as I do Batman the Animated Series. You never get inside Batman's head. Uh, he just does his thing, sneaks up behind villains, and that's usually that, but I like how Peter is constantly trying to figure things out as he's going up against villains like Mysterio. So toward the middle of the episode, Spider-Man is believed to be unalived. And this happens right around the time Peter was supposed to go on a study date with Mary Jane. He was held up at, I think it's the mall... There are several different locations in this episode. The museum, the mall, and Wonder Studios by the end of the episode. And yeah, he's in hot water with Mary Jane. She apparently says it's one strike and you're out, which is very harsh, but okay. <laughs> and Peter is thinking about hanging up the suit for good. He feels like Spider-Man has caused him way too much trouble. He doesn't really want to do this anymore. He's got everyone in New York seemingly upset with him as Spider-Man, of course. And I like how Terry shows up and she doesn't believe Spider-Man has been killed. Sorry, uh, unalived. <laughs> and she wants to try to clear his name. And she has to tell him, look, he's helped a lot of people. I wish he'd rubbed off on you. And this is when we get a very brief origin for Spider-Man. It's It doesn't take up an entire episode. It doesn't take up half of a film. I like how this is just shown to us in about, I'd say a minute, maybe a minute and a half. It's not a very long flashback at all. And uh, we, we get to see... Uh, how he became Spider-Man, we get to see a bit of um, what happened with Uncle Ben. Just enough for him to realize, hey, I'm doing this so no one else will have to suffer the way I have. No one else should have to lose a loved one. So he gets back in the game thanks to Terry showing up and giving him a little pep talk as well as him remembering his uncle. It, it was just long enough to satisfy my curiosity as an 11 year old when this episode first aired i didn't know we were gonna get it i still liked the episode but when this little flashback came on this was my first ever uh introduction to spider-man's origin so i liked it quite a bit now i've seen it in practically everything you get it in the toby Maguire movies you get it in the andrew garfield film uh, you get it in I think the Spider-Man 2017 show, they do an episode devoted to that as well. But I mean, it's it's integral to him being Spider-Man, so I get it. But I like how in this show, it's, it's visited very briefly here, and then we get back to the episode. They do some detective work and find out that Quentin Beck was working on a car chase movie. And he wanted the explosions to look even more real, so he used an actual mortar. Wow. And, uh, yeah, Spidey had to bring him in. And I like how later on the, uh, the scene 
is revisited. We are introduced to another character much later in the show, and I love how it plays into Mysterio's past. And we'll get into that way later on. I believe it is in season four. So we we have a while for that. But, you know, we get Jameson showing up. We have Terry showing up as well. Spider-Man, of course, wins the day by figuring out which version of Mysterio is real by using his spider sense. And he's down for the count. And um, I like at the end of the episode where MJ decides to give Peter another chance. I, I think um, I think she's just happy that she passed her test. I like that she decides to study by herself and she comes to the conclusion that, oh yeah, I'm capable of doing this. I'm capable of passing this exam. I studied and what do you know, I passed. And uh, Peter's of course happy of her, but, but they're kind of mending fences at the end of the episode. Um, he walks her to class, which I like. And yeah, she, she realizes that if she just applies her herself, she might not need a tutor at all. And she takes the test and does a pretty good job, I think. I would give the episode, I would say a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, I like that even though it is a one-shot episode, kind of a one-shot, we're setting things up with the Insidious Six. Did I say Sinister Six earlier on? In this incarnation, they're known as the Insidious Six. So we're introduced to Mysterio here, and he comes into play later in Season 2. And next time, we're going to be talking about Dr. Octopus, Armed and Dangerous. That's another one of my favorites from Season 1. And that is featuring Ephraim Zimbalist as the voice of Dr. Octopus. So be here for that. Till next time, guys. Okay.